you very much. Emeril Lagasse here. Welcome, folks, to Emerald Live. You know, believe it or not, I'm kind of a relaxed kind of guy, don't you think, you know? <laughs> kind of easy going, go with the flow, take it easy, just kind of roll with it, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's why tonight I thought it would be great and a great idea if we just rolled with it. <laughs> I'm talking... Clam rolls to spring rolls. Ooh. We're gonna roll them up my way tonight, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> Speaking about just an incredible roll up, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. See what we're gonna roll tonight right here on Emerald Live. How's everybody doing tonight? Okay. Yeah. Got a great show for you tonight, folks. Kind of a, a roll em up kind of thing. Roll em up. I like that. Let me show you what we're going to roll up on the menu tonight. I'm really excited about this. The first dish, something that I grew up with that I just can't wait to eat. And that is a fried spicy Ipswich clam roll. Oh, man. Did you grow up on those things, those clam rolls and the little hot dog buns and the tartar sauce. And, oh, yes. And then um, we're going to do some stu stuffed grape leaves. Yeah, because those get rolled up and going to make this delicious filling. And uh, a little rolled eggplant in volatini. We're going to do that with a little, uh, well, you'll see that. She's just, <laughs> just... <laughs> And then a fresh crab spring roll, and then we're going to do a Filipino-style wrapped deep-fried banana roll. Oh, yeah, babe. It's all about the rolls tonight. Well, in order to sort of kick up this um, fried clam roll, I want to make a slaw, what I call a little maw-maw slaw. So I'm going to go with a little bit of green cabbage, and I'm going to go with some red cabbage, about equal parts. And then what we'll do is we'll just sort of mix those together first because of quantity. Then I'm using some collard greens that we're just going to wash and dry and use that. Now I've got equal parts of that as well. And then we're going to use lots of fresh chopped parsley or cilantro, some green onions, and then lots of shaved red onion as well in here. You can use this on all kinds of things. So that's basically the mama part of the slaw. Now we got to sort of make it happy. So first thing is we're going to add a little sweetness with some sugar. We're going to add a little heat with some cayenne pepper. So we got that sweet and hot thing going on. And then we're going to have a little salt in here because, you, you know, just got to have a little. <laughs> and then we'll have a little fresh ground pepper as well. And then now we're going to add the mayonnaise sometimes i'll add a little bit of apple cider vinegar that gives a nice touch and this is that uh great poupon 
We'll do a little mustard in there. And now let's see, we'll just sort of fold this in. Yeah, that apple cider vinegar really sort of just gives it a little, mmm. I like it. So we're going to mix this all in nice, nice. And then what we're going to do, folks, is come back and refrigerate this. You could do this a day before, which will work great. Um, it'll get a little bit runny on you because, believe it or not, the cabbage will start to uh, what they call bleed, which I like. It sort of gets all the juices going, particularly if you add some vinegar in there. Now, Ipswich clams. Delicious. Ipswich is a little uh, outside of Boston. Uh, great frying clams is what they are. They come packed in quart, half gallon, gallon. They're really delicious. What I like to do is the first thing is I like to drain sort of the sea water out of them a little bit. So I do that through a colander. And don't be alarmed. You look and see it's kind of, you get a shot of that there, you? Kind of looks like uh, the muddy Mississippi there for a minute, you know? It's not. It's just the way that they are. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put them back here in the bowl that we've drained, and now we're going to make them happy. Because you see, they're just okay right now, but they're not fully happy. So, we're going to add some hot sauce, and we're going to add some milk. And what we're going to do is we're just going to let them, oh, see? Oh. They're all excited right now. The necks are just popping up like that, baby. Let me tell you. Oh. All right. We're going to let this sort of marinate. We're going to let the Marmar slaw marinate. We'll put it all together when we come back. Stick around, folks. We'll be right back. Back here. up right now clam rolls coming up here we go all right so you let the clams sort of marinate and then what I do is I take about two-thirds flour to about a third cornmeal okay a couple of reasons why and then of course what we want to do is we want to season with a little bit of essence in there now when we're ready, you want to sort of drain as much of the liquid as you can from the liquid. <laughs> and then we're going to put them right inside here. And then we're going to begin to start shaking them up and breading them. I just do it with my hands like this. Is that somebody's pacemaker? <laughs> this is a test. <laughs> on the emergency broadcasting system. In case your teapot is going off <laughs> and you have loud noises in your house, Please, don't evacuate. <laughs> Stay with me. Oh, man. This is a rough crowd, Doc. Rough crowd. <laughs> All right, so we want to bread 
Yeah, she's up there in the back row. It's the teapot. <laughs> well, get her a couple of crumpets. <laughs> All right, so now what we're going to do, we want to make sure that we sort of dust the excess flour from the clams. We shake them off like that, and then we're going to go right inside the fryer. Now, while that's happening, while that's happening, we're going to do another, another batch. <laughs> Got to wash those hands. Clam police is outside. <laughs> now, you just get a couple of Frankfurter rolls like this. And what I do, what I like to do at least, see, beautiful, nice and fresh, get a little butter like this in a little non-stick pan. And then what I do is get the rolls in here, a couple at a time. Now we're going to check our clams. There used to be these, like, little clam shacks all over the place, you know, and in Dartmouth and Westport and going up to the Cape, and you could stop, pull in there, get a little clam roll, a couple of clam rolls, maybe a stuffy, depending on where you were. Oh, yeah, babe. So we're going to get them nice and golden brown here, turning the rolls, just to warm them up a little bit. Oh, yeah, look at this. Oh, yeah, babe. So we want to take these out nice and escapey. You want to just sort of lightly salt them when they come out. And then basically, it's simple. You get one of these nice toasted fritter rolls like this, okay? And what I like to do is just go in with a little more and more slaw like that, all right? And then you take some fried clam... Just push them in like that. Okay, so you get a little fried clam action like that. <laughs> and then what you do to just finish it off is you get a little tartar sauce. And you just do a little tartar sauce like that. And then you look around... <laughs> and you find, like, a friend. Do you eat clams? Yes. <laughs> awesome! <laughs> yes! This is for you, God. Don't worry, there's only like 70 million people watching you right now. And then... Oh, yes! Don't worry, we got a big dry cleaning bill around here. Let me feed you this one, please. Delicious. Awesome. Fantastic. This next roll happens to be with grape leaves. And most people, if you're not used to that, they go, oh, come on. What are you doing now? Grape leaves. This is absolutely fantastic. Let me show you this. We're going to add some olive oil in the skillet. And what we're going to first do is take lean ground beef. Could be pork, could be veal, whatever. And we're going to start breaking it up here like this and browning it up. Once it starts getting brown, I'm going to add onions, a little tomato, a little butter, a little touch of dill. Dill goes a long way, okay? A little fresh oregano and basil, green onions. Going to let that cook. Salt and pepper. Then I'm going to add like one cup of rice to two, three cups of water. Let that mixture kind of cook and get happy. So we got this lean beef and rice mixture. When we come back, I'm going to show you not only the mixture, but how you roll these grape leaves for a dynamite dish. Stick around. We'll be right back. Rock it.
Welcome back. Got the big roll going on right now. Clam rolls are out there. It's bad. There's a reason for that, and I'll show you in a second. Grape leaves. You get them, and they're, like, squished inside, like, a, in a jar, generally. And they got some sort of salty brine. I don't know what's in that thing, but... I rinse mine, rinse mine, and rinse mine until I just got them, because they're really quite delicious. Sometimes they'll have, like, a big part of the vine there that you want to just take a paring knife and cut a V out of it, because you want to be able to roll it. And in our filling, if you missed it, we had the ground meat and the onions, and then we um, had a little tomato, some salt and pepper. We added rice, about three to one, and we made this rice mixture. And then you want to let it cool so that you can sort of mix this. I've tasted it. I've re-seasoned it. And basically, now it's like sort of like rolling a wonton. Same thing. You got the grape leaf, and you go in for maybe a tablespoon or so of the filling. Pack it pretty good. And then what you do is you just sort of roll it one time over, tight, okay? Then you sort of come in this side, and you sort of come in on this side, and then you finish rolling it like this, like a, like a little cigar. <laughs> and then that side goes down. Let me show you one more time, because I'm sure you don't have instant replay at home yet. <laughs> so, oh, I know, I'd call you a cable company. <laughs> so we're going to take a little bit of the filling like this, get it packed, and we're going to just sort of roll it one time tight. And then we roll this in tight. Roll this in tight. And then we roll this tight. Tight. And then we keep this just like that. Now, here's the madness. You're going to take about a third of a cup of hot water. You could use stock, too. And you sort of go over the grape leaves like this. Then, I like to take some Parmesan cheese. And then you cover them up. Ah. So now you cover them up, and the hot water is going to make them steam. In about 20, 25 minutes, you want to go back to the oven, and you want to take part of the foil off, and you want to hit it with a little bit more hot water, because it's going to evaporate that first 20, 25, 30 minutes, and you want to keep them moist. You don't want to dry them out. You with me so far? Yeah. All right, so we're going to get these in the oven. Now, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take some eggplant, take the tops off here, and I'm going to cut about a half inch long strips and start cooking them in olive oil. When we come back, I'll show you this eggplant roll. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. <laughs> So far, folks. Yeah. Should we keep going? Yeah. All right. So uh, here's what we're going. Ah. <laughs> See that pan is smoking. I'm going to put those sliced eggplant in there. You do them a few at a time. The goal of this here is not only to uh, to get them soft, get a little color. Now they'll absorb a lot. Eggplant will absorb a lot of. Uh, a lot of the oil, so you're going to have to keep adding the oil as you keep doing this. To get them nice and tender, see, look, the oil's out of the pan already. 
So don't panic. You just sort of add a little more. Believe it or not, I've only got the, uh, the pan on medium, medium-high heat. I don't have it full blast here. I want to give the eggplant a chance uh, to sort of cook. Who brought in their pets? <laughs> All right. Now, once this begins to start getting tender, see, again, look, they're already absorbing that oil up there. This is a good time right now, too, when you're doing that, to kind of get a little salt. Eggplant needs a little salt. <laughs> and uh, the thinner you can slice them, the better, because you want it to be pliable. See how this is starting to be pliable now? You want it to be pliable so you can work with them. So we'll take those out. You with me so far? Yeah. All right, now, here's what we're going to do. You take one of these here, once they get cool. Let's make the filling real quick. I got ricotta cheese, I got mozzarella, I got green onions, and I got some fresh oregano. Then, a little fresh grated nutmeg. Fresh grated nutmeg. Nutmeg is one of those spices, right? And you know who you are, I can see in, on your faces that you have like a thing of nutmeg that's been in your pantry for about nine years. <laughs> along with a lot of other things. Cause you know, you used it three Christmases ago and, um, and you really think it's like really good and fresh right now, you know? You know, empty out your spice cabinet, splurge a little bit. So we're gonna do fresh nutmeg. See, that's good. This goes right back in its house, you know? <laughs> now, the next thing we're gonna do is Mix this together. Now we've got a filling. And then what we're going to do, folks, is when this gets nice and cool, what we do is we just put a little of this right in the center. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you like this, this don't you? <laughs> and see, Doc, then what you do is, look, you just kind of go over and then tuck it, and then you just sort of keep it tucked like that, and you roll it like that, nothing fancy. And then you can just flatten it out. That oil that you see in the bottom is just that. It's the olive oil now coming out of the eggplant. One more time in case you don't have instant replay at home. A little bit of that cheese. And, uh, and then basically now, look and see it, that broke. Don't panic. You don't have to call 911. Just keep it tight. Roll it like that. Flatten it out. Now. Here's where I like to season it right here. I like to come with a little bit of salt, a little bit of fresh pepper like this. And then to finish it for me, I like a basic little tomato sauce. Just a real like home style marinara sauce. And then what you do, you don't have to drown it. What you do is you just get a little of this and go over it. You can do this in advance, which is a great thing. You can make this today, and then tomorrow you can just bring it out at room temperature and then pop it in the oven and you got, like, dinner. Fresh basil, because I just, I love basil. And, of course, I'm just a freak for Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. Yeah, it's kind of like toothpaste for me. <laughs> so we're going to just add that. Oh, yeah, babe. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go in the oven with this. But before we do that, we've already done our water to our uh, grape leaves. Okay? We've already done that. So now let's go in with this. Well, let's do this first. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> cook over here. Got me all confused there, <laughs> Rhoda. Oh, yeah, those are looking good. Now, we're going to go in with the rolls into the oven. Let's talk about grape leaves for a minute. What I like to do to serve it with this, you serve yogurt. Just regular yogurt. 
And if you want, you can put mint inside the yogurt or you can serve the mint on the side. So it's really totally up to you. You think we should put the mint in? Yeah. All right, so we got the mint here now. We'll put the mint inside the yogurt. Perfect. A little spoon. Now we've got minted yogurt. Oh, he's so creative. <laughs> oh, Rosie G. What are we going to watch next? Then you want to take the grape leaves. Don't break them all up now. You did all of that work. You don't want to break them up. And you just do the whole platter like this, basically. And then they make great hors d'oeuvres to go around, start with, just really terrific. And then you just dip them in the, in the mint leaf like this. That's a little hot now, babe. Okay. Oops. I wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> and then that's the cool thing. You just go around, you got like a little hors d'oeuvre thing like that. And you go, all right, have a grape Thank leaf. You. It's hot now, honey. Okay. And there you have it. You got your grape leaves while we got the eggplant rolls in the oven. You all with me so far? Yeah. All right, don't get too excited, please, huh? <laughs> now, let's go on to another roll, since we're on a roll right now. <laughs> I love spring rolls. I just absolutely love Vietnamese food, but I love spring rolls. They make great first courses. They make great hors d'oeuvres. I mean, I love to eat them for lunch. Sometimes I have them with sweet pork. Sometimes I have them with crab. The traditional one is with shrimp. And, you know, just get off your horse for a second and follow along here because, you know, it's, oh, my horse algae got eight ingredients. <laughs> it's cooking. <laughs> you think you go get an oil change and they only got one step? <laughs> no. Even a vacuum has more than one step. <laughs> I have a little Juliana carrot. I have a little Juliana papaya. Bean sprouts, because, like, I just love them. And then cilantro and mint that I picked. I decided to do crab meat spring rolls. Nice. You could do boiled shrimp, cooked chicken, cooked beef, leftover meatloaf if you want. <laughs> then I have these vermicelli noodles, rice noodles. I'm going to flavor them with a little sesame oil a little soy sauce, and some green onions. And then a little bit of salt. Then the biggest thing right here is these rice paper. Okay? These are rice paper. They come, they're like... Okay? But I'm going to show you what you do with them when we come back. Stick around. We'll be right back, folks. Back in. going to check on those uh, eggplant rolls right now. Check it out. Look at this. You Can you get a shot of that there, babe? See, it's starting to bubble. Just starting to bubble. Not quite done yet, though. Let them get all that nice and absorb that sauce. Let's go back to the spring roll. I told you about all the ingredients. Before I show you the trick of making a spring roll, let me uh, make a quick little peanut sauce that will go along with this that'll be really tasty. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, um, we're going to add peanut butter. Well, that would be appropriate. So we got peanut butter. And then we got soy sauce. 
lime juice, cilantro. This is a uh, hot sauce called sriracha. Oh, yeah, babe. This is a fish sauce called knock mum. Wonder where they got that from. <laughs> this is a little tamarind. A little sesame oil. Got to have a little garlic in here, don't you think? Yeah. And I don't think that we got enough cilantro. I absolutely love cilantro. Or coriander is another name. So let's put a little bit more of that in there. Now... So we're going to mix all these ingredients in here. You don't want it too thick. It's a dipping sauce. Let's get to business. Now, first thing. You want to take as hot water as you can to handle. Okay? And you want to soften the rice paper. That's the first step. And you see it, it'll begin to start getting pliable. Yeah. Now, you put it on your surface. Okay. As round as you can. And then we're going to take a little bit of the vermicelli noodles. We're going to take some crab meat. going to take a little juliana carrot. Papaya, bean sprout, and they always have pieces of fresh mint and fresh cilantro. And then you can see this now. Look, again, like we're rolling. So we're going to roll this tight, as tight as we can. Tuck it in. Then you're going to tuck in the sides. Tuck in the sides and roll it up, and you have a spring roll. All right? Instant replay. <laughs> you take the rice paper in there. The water should be as hot as you can stand it. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> and then, once it's pliable... You're going to go down right here, and you're going to start building it. Vermicelli noodles. This is a fun little potty. You have a little spring roll potty? Oh, yeah, babe. Make little stations in the kitchen. Mess with your neighbors. <laughs> little cilantro, little mint, crab meat. Now... Here's the trick. So we're going over, rolling it. Look, see, see that? My finger's pushing it in. Tight. 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 Roll it. Then you're going to roll the side in. You're going to roll the side in tight. And there you have the spring roll, just like that, folks, okay? <laughs> now... What I like to do is, if I'm going to serve this at a party, sort of hors d'oeuvre style, I'll take um, the peanut sauce, and I'll just sort of serve it in a dish like this, okay? And then, if you want to kick it up another notch, you can take a little chipotle pepper, which is smoked jalapeno, and you can take a little bit of mayonnaise and make this sort of little crema like this, like a little chipotle mayonnaise. And you can sort of just serve a little pile of that on your platter, which is really spicy. So you got the peanut sauce, which is not spicy. 
And then you got the salon, uh, the uh, chipotle mayonnaise. Talk about a nice first course right there. There you have it, folks, okay? Really, really great, simple. This thing is bubbling away right now, and basically what we're going to do is this. We're just going to take a little bit of that tomato sauce that we had left over, serve that on the bottom, and then we're going to take a little bit of our eggplant rolls, like such. Oh, look at that. And we're going to serve that just like, like such, okay? And then we're going to take a little bit of fresh basil and just serve a little fresh basil like that. And there you have that. That's a little eggplant roll right there, okay? Oh, yeah. There you have that. All right, when we come back, one more roll. Stick around. We'll be right back. Another uh, paper to wrap, Lupkia. Oh, don't be afraid. You can find them in the Asian markets. This is basically a rice paper. Well, I lied. It's a flour paper, believe it or not. It's made with flour, very, very thin, almost like a pancake. So what I like to do with this is basically take a little banana. The kids love this. Take a little banana like this, maybe like half. And then what you do is you take the paper and use an egg white and brush the egg white all over the paper like this. And then what you do is you put the banana in there again and you roll it tight, 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 roll it in, roll it in, tight, tight, tight. Okay? So you got a little wrapped banana. I've done some of these earlier. I'm going to start frying some of these babies. Oh, yeah. So we're going to do a little fried banana in here now. A little vegetable oil. Now, while that's happening, I got a little milk scalding on the stove here. You're going to use a little milk, a little cream, a little half and half. I'm going to sweeten it with just a little bit of honey. A little bit of honey. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it with shaved chocolate. And I'm going to make a little chocolate sauce like this. And you just sort of get that until it's nice and mixed. Get it all really, really nice and incorporated in there. You with me so far? Yeah. Isn't it fun that we've been rolling all night, huh? <laughs> been rolling all kinds of things, you know? How's the uh, spring rolls? How's the eggplant? What's the verdict? Spring rolls rule. <laughs> so now we're going to get these nice and golden brown, folks. And then what I do, basically then, again, like I said, very, very fun with the kids. I put kind of a little bit of raspberries, which are just awesome. My, my kids love raspberries. Blueberries, they love them too. So you kind of get in the fruit thing here. A little more blueberries like that. And then basically, I take now the chocolate sauce and I just kind of put a little bit of that in the center like that. And then uh, now, the fried banana. Oh yeah, babe. <laughs> They're like egg rolls almost. And you could use egg roll wrappers if you can't find these. And then I just take one of these like this. Now, they're hot, okay? I just take one of them like that, 
with a serrated knife. I take another one like this with a serrated knife, you see? And then basically I just sort of go and stand this up and stand this up like that. Stand that up like that. And then, um, you know, whatever kind of you got mint or whatever, you can just sort of just do that. And there you have it, folks, a little wrapped banana right there. Hey, folks, it's been a wonderful roll tonight with you all. I want to thank you for joining me. I'm Emerald Lagasse. I'll see you next time.